If that was fresh powder coat, though, we'd be in deep water. You know what I'm saying? Rust Town City, dude. Yikes. James's truck is out here. This is uh, update one for this thing. Joey's here on the weekend and we're filming a couple things and I've pushed a bit on this since last time. Uh, the lights in particular are like the biggest addition on top of just the welding that's been done. So I figured we could just cover those two things. Uh, it's good to, to have these things outside every once in a while and get a perspective on them that's different from them just sitting in the shop. When James originally had his truck, the last time it was running and, and caged and linked and built and in the desert, I have this awesome little picture I found of Amber and of this truck with like a OG style windshield light rack. Had five Hellas, just regular Hella lights in there. So we wanna run Baja designs on this whole thing. The package, I, I kind of looked at what our options were and what would be optimal for for the setup that he has for James and um, you know I wanted to make sure that we included a light rack up here in a similar position as his old setup just to kind of have the same vibe uh, the stuff that's a little more um, not as exposed or low-key that's not just that big rack is a 30 inch bar in the front tabbed obviously there's radiator up here so it's not really blocking your cooling uh, it's just a good spot for it and then on the back there's also an rtl bar which i believe would stand for a rear tail light but it's that guy up there so that'll have like a either a service or reverse lights which would just be like a white clear light and then it'll have a you know an amber in there and also your brake lights and your secondary brake lights so that'll all be all be wired in and it'll it'll work off of a factory you know just off your brake pedal and then it'll also just be on an on off switch as well as the amber i think that we'll have the amber on its own switch so it's not something that just when the ignition's on and the car's on the amber's on because then if he's driving this thing on the street it's just going to be a bust so got those guys and then there's a bunch of rock lights and service lights so one two three four so two in the rear two in the front and then there's also four dome lights or rock lights on the interior too so the big part of the baja designs package is the light rack it makes a pretty bold statement with the truck and that's what we were going for the one thing i i try to pay attention to with building light racks is to not put them too low even though the lower they go essentially the cooler it looks and, and it makes the profile kind of more dynamic and aggressive but your cone of vision uh, when you're sitting down can be affected dramatically if this is too low and what i mean by cone of vision is if if this is the steering wheel and I'm looking out, there's a, there's a cone from your eye as the center line out that you want to retain. And part of your cone of vision is already affected by the front clip and how much you can see over the front, which all, you know, that's, that's one of the big issues with big one piece clips is that your vision is affected on your corners significantly. Uh, this is right at the height where the trim piece for the removal windshield, it's right around the same level is that so you're really not any lower than what you had just from the trim piece which would almost be like a uh, a windshield like for like a racing application you'd have like a window trim like that uh this whole thing is one inch 120 wall chrome ollie the roll is tailored to the radius on the windshield and then just simple linkage uh solid aluminum bar 
drilled and tapped with a little bulkhead on the top of the roof that actually goes to the cage. So this whole thing is not part of the cab. Obviously there's like silicone bronze weld where this tab is going to the A pillar, but it's just to seal it. The actual tab goes all the way to the A pillar of the, of the roll cage and then it's welded internally here. So it's very rigid. It does come off. I don't expect him to just have it on full time unless he wants it on full time, but it's just one, two, three, four bolts and then the whole thing's off. There is adjustment, but more or less these lights have a serious amount of adjustment per light. So I don't really think we need to build like a tilt into it unless they were fixed lights. I'd much rather be able to, to like kick this guy one way, you know, up or down or left or right and be able to do that specifically for each light than to just have them fixed and adjust just the tilt. Uh, the other stuff is just the welding. You can see, like I mentioned before, most of this is welded. I'd say 68%. Let's not go 69 yet, but there is some area on the driver's side foot well that needs to be done. Everything on the passenger side, front and rear is done. And it, most of it is continuously seam welded. There's a couple of areas I couldn't get to just for obvious reasons. So when this thing comes back from powder, then we'll put body seal, like a 3M body seal on just the areas that we absolutely can't get to. There is some more interior stuff we need to do, but it's mostly just bolt on accessories. And we will go to the whiteboard and kind of look at the list of stuff that needs to get done. So then uh, it's gonna make sense on the updates. Here's our dedicated frontier to-do list, roughly. Uh, there could be stuff that gets added to this, but the big majority is up here. I've kind of labeled it, stuff I've done before with these things, you know, the whiteboard situation is, I will put like a, you know, one of my guys' names there, or abbreviation for their name, as far as what they're gonna do. Obviously the X's are for stuff that's already done. So like the light bar, windshield, front LED bar, rear LED bar, rock lights, that stuff is done. Holly, it has its own stuff over here. PCI stuff is already here. They've, you know, we've got the whole package. So I'm just waiting for Holly as far as the internal stuff and the uh, display. And we'll start knocking that stuff out. But what I got going on right now that we want to get done for the next update is rear panels, front panels. So I can kind of go in a little detail there. The rear panels would be like enclosure panels on the side of the chassis. Um, just aluminum sheet metal, bead rolled, uh, Zeus button quarter turn fastened on. Front panels will be trim panels around the engine compartment and the, the chassis, the lower portions of the chassis that'll kind of close things off and, and make it a cleaner operation in the end. Uh, top rear panel is gonna be a panel that goes across the top of the bed sides and ties in the top surface of the rear chassis together, kind of goes around the the spare tires. Hard lines are part of the plumbing, so we're gonna do that stuff in house. Um, that'll be hard lines, the rear axle already has them. The lower arms on the front already have them, so we're just gonna tie everything in. We have a handbrake that we need to put in, which I don't think is on the list. So that's something. Uh, mini fender trim pieces, so there's bare, just a sliver of mini fender on each side, uh, you know, in front of the doors and we need to have like a trim piece that's that's blocking it and not just gonna make it so when gravel comes up or rocks come up, it just blows the little sliver of mini fender off. So that's a thing. Uh, upper link gussets are one of the remaining chassis modifications that need to happen. There's a section where the, around the C pillar where the upper link is, uh, the ties in and then the, the rest of the chassis kind of draws out to the back half and it just, I can see there's gonna be a shear point there that's either gonna have cracks or something's gonna fail. It, it just, it's something that needs to be addressed for sure. <sighs> Upper arm modification. So we're probably not gonna tag that one in this next episode, but the upper arm 
has a cross section and when the when the front suspension droops out it it has like a clearance issue where the rack wants to hit on an area so we're going to modify that and just redo it in a way where we can get the extra two inches of travel that it has uh, it's limited by that and it, it's really sucking up some real estate so that's a thing um, radiator ducting and valence those are two front items that need to be taken care of. So the radiator ducting is just some very generic um, airflow, directional airflow ducting out of aluminum that we do that would go from the opening of the grill on the, on the one piece to into the radiator. It doesn't have to be like formed or anything crazy, just, just kind of a box situation there to direct things. Uh, the valence, so some trucks, it's kind of been a trend and it obviously, there's not a point to it on trucks that you see with the valence, it's just for looks, but you know, you have, you can have a tube pre-render bumper or you can have like a strip of like a ABS style material that goes down. Um, and you know, it started with trophy trucks for aero and it was developed in a wind tunnel for aero and people saw it on a trophy truck or a couple trophy trucks. And then they said, Oh, that looks cool on my pre-render. So that's all it is. It's, it does nothing else but it does clean up the area, the front area of a truck. And with James, I know that he's wanted something like that. So we're gonna run a hybrid where we have the tube. And then we also have like a nicely shaped valence trim piece that goes below it. I do have concerns on that just because the way the mechanism works for the hood, it, it flips up and then it kind of goes up and over. And I wanna make sure that we're not shooting ourselves in the foot with where the valence hangs and the clip comes down. Another thing that's not on here that I need to write down is uh, another mechanism to hold the one piece because there's two pins and there's two latches, but nothing in the front and the front is going to be able to shift around and move around. So we need to figure out another latching mechanism on the front of the one piece clip to have the thing completely stable and not jogging around when it's going through impacts or whoops or whatever. Uh, the pod for Holly display is something we talked about. Center pod for Switch Pros, battery cutoff, intercom, iPad mount. That is all under the Holly and PCI appointments in the interior. These are my two little surprise guys. So they're kind of like a custom little feature that I want to do on the truck. James knows about one of them. The other one's kind of going to be like a, a joke for when he brings it to shows. So I have those covered uh, just to release them later. I have Sean on here to weld the front bulkhead. Oh, I do have add secondary hood latch to front, but that doesn't really look like a thing. So this is a super efficient way working in a shop environment to walk over and get a grasp on what stuff needs to be done. And I got it from TJ Russell when he was building the Baja 911 and I would go check on him in his shop all the way up to SEMA, you know, maybe every month. And I'd see like this extensive, he'd have this just one whiteboard and it was all very small writing, fully laid out of what he needed to get done. And I don't think there was a particular order, but I just remember the more, you know, the sooner it got to SEMA, the less stuff was on that board because he was just crossing it off. And so it's a good way to ground yourself. If you remember something and you say, oh, I'll just remember later or I'll put it in my phone or whatever. It's easier just to walk over and write it down, be done, and then come back and check in on it. And it, and it just simplifies the cluster in your head. So this is the list we have for James right now. Obviously it'll change, but this is at least our goals and stuff we're gonna shoot for in the next coming weeks. So back to outside. So we went through the whiteboard this next week and the next update you can expect to see a lot of aesthetic stuff um, aluminum work in the rear aluminum work in the front bumper treatment we're going to hold off on the electronics and the pods and everything that go on the interior 
just until we have all the parts. So that can be a whole nother thing. And then I also have one thing that I left out that's gonna go for the aesthetics in the rear that'll kind of be a surprise for the next update. So uh, thank you guys so much for the support and the comments. And if you see little things that stand out, I'm probably gonna say this a couple times, but if you see stuff that stands out that you want us to cover, stuff that interests you or stuff you just have a question about, please comment and uh, you know reach out and we'll get it handled. So thank you guys and enjoy.